One stray bullet, one artillery round fired just a second later, that's all it would have taken to end the life of history's most infamous mass murderer. How in the world did Hitler survive World War I? Prior to the war to end all wars, Hitler was living in Vienna as a starving artist. The city was the cultural mecca of the world at the time, and Hitler had come with hopes of joining the prestigious Vienna Academy of Fine Arts. However, his drawings were so poor that he was denied even the chance at taking the official exam. This deeply affected the already moody, disenfranchised teenager, spinning him even further into a world of his own making. By all accounts, Hitler was a moody, largely insufferable young man who loved to launch into spirited political speeches and debates, but would immediately be enraged if anyone corrected him on any matter. Today, he'd be the reason video games have ban lists. He also showed no interest in the few women who were attracted to him, preferring to remain solitary and rebuffing any women who wished to get near him. Making no effort to find a job, he believed he was above doing common work. Hitler lived on ever-shrinking savings, spending what little money he did have attending the opera in the evenings and dressing like a young gentleman. When his friend was accepted into the Vienna Conservatory to study music, Hitler was naturally enraged and one day left the apartment the two shared without warning. On his own in Vienna, Hitler was forced to move from place to place, but his lack of family or friends in the city made it difficult to find permanent housing. Despite his money running out, Hitler still refused to find work, and instead pawned all his possessions and started sleeping outside on park benches. He was soon starving in the street, a miserable, smelly wretch of a man, until he was accepted into a local homeless shelter. Finally, Hitler deigned to stoop so low as to work shoveling snow or doing some other physical labor in order to earn some cash. He maintained his lifestyle for a few years, becoming exposed to the political chaos of Vienna in the final days of the weakening Austrian-Hungarian Empire. It was here that he began to form his hard-edged anti-Semitist views, despite the fact that he had befriended a Jewish man who helped Hitler sell artwork to local shops so he could earn a meager living. Many of these same shops were run by Jews, and without them, Hitler would have been starving again. Hitler continued his habit of long speeches, immediately flying into a rage if anyone opposed or corrected him. With war looming in the horizon, Hitler was summoned for a military service, but seethed with hatred at the idea of serving in the mixed-race Austrian-Hungarian military. Instead, Hitler opted to ignore his draft letter, and with the help of his inheritance he received upon his father's death, he moved to Munich. If war was going to break out, he wanted to serve in a pure-race German military, not the mongrel military of the cosmopolitan Austrian-Hungarian Empire. The Austrian authorities, however, tracked Hitler down in Munich and arrested him. Hitler was now in serious trouble, as he was facing prison time for dodging the draft. However, he wrote an impassioned letter to the Austrian consulate, apologizing for skipping out his military service service and speaking about his difficult and troubled youth. The consulate was so impressed that Hitler was not punished for dodging the draft, but he was, however, forced to return and serve anyway. Hitler easily failed the required medical exam and was soon free to return to Munich, despite the fact that he should have been deported by the German authorities. To this day, no one knows why this didn't happen, or how it could have changed history. In Munich, Hitler spent the short time before the war once more painting to make a living, selling cheap paintings of local landmarks to tourists and shops. One day, Hitler was asked how he planned to make a permanent living, to which Hitler ominously replied that it did not matter, as soon there would be war. Hitler would prove to be terrifyingly right. On August 1, 1914, Hitler gathered along with a horde of other people in a big public plaza in Munich. A city official hastily addressed the crowd. War had been brewing for over a year, and now it was official. Germany was at war with the Russian Empire. The assembled people began to celebrate the glorious conquest that was to come, with a jubilant Hitler standing in their midst. Two days later, Hitler volunteered to enlist in the German army, and would enlist in a Bavarian regiment. In the words of history's worst mass murderer, for me, as for every German, there now began the greatest and most uncomfortable time of my earthly existence. Compared to the events of this gigantic struggle, everything past receded to shallow nothingness. Hitler was assigned to the Bavarian Reserve Infantry Regiment 16, and as soon as he saw battle at the First Battle of Ypres, a battle that would come to be known to the Germans as the Massacre of the Innocents for the incredible casualties inflicted on the young, inexperienced recruits of the German army. As one of the first battles of World War I, it was expected to be quick and decisive action with a clear victor and loser. However, military commanders on both sides were beginning to realize that modern weapons were making mass battles all but impossible, and that the invention of modern artillery and the machine guns so heavily favored the defender that battles would grind to a stalemate. With both sides dug into miles of trenches, Hitler would find himself in one of those soaked, miserable trenches battling the elements, allied artillery bombardments, and the general misery of a gridlocked war. Despite this, though, Hitler was actually in high spirits. After so many years of being a disenfranchised youth, Hitler had finally found people he fit in with, and a place where his ultra-nationalistic far-right views were welcomed. Nonetheless, the First Battle of Ypres proved to be a relentless meat grinder, with the only way to secure victory being through massed assault against Allied trenches defended by machine guns and artillery. These human wave attacks proved to be devastating 
exceedingly costly for both sides, but the failure of the German army to break the Allied lines would set the Germans on a defensive posture for the rest of the war as their grand strategy was rethought. Rather than try and defeat the Allies as a whole unit militarily, they would hold a defensive posture in the west while assaulting the east until the Russian Empire was forced to peace terms and the entire German military could be brought to bear on the western allies. Germany suffered upwards of 130,000 casualties in a month of fighting, and yet miraculously Hitler managed to survive every action relatively unharmed. He even began to grow a reputation for being incredibly lucky, always managing to avoid an exploding artillery shell that moments later killed or seriously injured the men Hitler had just been chatting with. In Hitler's mind, it was only further proof that he was destined for some great work. The horrible casualties Hitler saw inflicted on both sides, though, took their toll on the young dictator-to-be, and he became even more sullen and reserved. Hitler's unit had entered the battle with 3,600 men, but at its end only had 611 fit for duty. Hitler began to withdraw from others, the stress of the slaughter taking its toll on his mind. Hitler was soon promoted to Lance Corporal and assigned to become a regimental message runner. While many have claimed that this was a safe job in the rear areas, it's unclear if Hitler truly did operate in the rear areas or if he had more dangerous job of running messages along the actual front. Hitler was thought of as a peculiar loner by his comrades, and he was teased for his aversion to graphic stories of sexual conquest, earning the nickname Adi. He was also a staunch non-smoker and would trade his tobacco rations for the jam rations of other soldiers. Well-liked, Hitler was still thought of as a strange individual who would only grow more sullen and distant as the war progressed and gradually turned against Germany. At times, he was known to leap up off his cot and launch into a rant about Germany's invisible enemies, namely Jews and Marxists. Even with his peculiarities, Hitler was thought of as eager to please his superiors and commended for his bravery. Despite his willingness to serve, though, Hitler was passed up for promotion repeatedly as his superiors believed that he was simply not a commanding enough figure to earn the respect of the men placed under him. The peculiarities of his personality and the obvious fact that he did not belong in a military organization also influenced the decision to not promote him to sergeant. If Hitler was frustrated by this, he never showed it, and instead continued to serve dutifully. During lulls in fighting, Hitler would paint landscapes of the war, and at one point adopted a stray dog which he nicknamed Fuchsel. The dog quickly became a beloved pet to Hitler and would follow him everywhere that his unit deployed to. He taught Fuchsel many tricks and the dog quickly became a favorite amongst the soldiers. Then one day in August of 1917, Hitler's regiment was sent to a quieter sector of the front in Alsace for a bit of rest. Tragically, someone stole Fuchsel during the regiment's transition and even went so far as to pilfer Hitler's artwork. The loss of Fuchsel broke Hitler's heart and he finally took his first leave of the war, taking an 18-day leave to Berlin to stay with the family of a fellow soldier. In Berlin, Hitler was shocked at the anti-war sentiment of the civilian population. The promised rapid defeat of the Allies had turned into a a three-year-long meat grinder that was taking the lives of thousands of young men every day. The civilian population was sick of it, and the war's popularity was rapidly declining. Hitler, however, blamed this collapse and community morale on the hidden agents working to undermine the glorious Germany, Jews and Marxists, who hoped to see the German Empire collapse. Disgusted by what he saw taking place back home, Hitler quickly returned to duty, showing once more incredible luck at avoiding death or serious injury. Just a year earlier, during the Battle of Soma, Hitler had been wounded in his left thigh by an exploding shell. That shell wiped out several of Hitler's fellow message runners when it exploded right at the entrance of the dispatch runner's dugout. Hitler, as usual, had just left the location, but was near enough to be struck. As a result of his injury, Hitler spent two months at a Red Cross hospital and was scheduled to be transferred back to Munich to work at the depot. However, Hitler wrote an impassioned letter to his commanding officer, asking that he be allowed to return to the regiment because he couldn't stand the thought of being in the safety of home while his fellow soldiers fought and died on the front. Impressed by his sense of duty and bravery, Hitler was allowed allowed to return to the front. His next injuries would come as a result of gas attacks. During a chlorine gas attack, Hitler and his comrades were temporarily blinded. A follow-on mustard gas attack took Hitler's voice, which would also return in time. Due to his injuries, however, Hitler was sent to a hospital in Passavike behind the lines. It was there, while lying in his hospital bed, that Hitler's thoughts became increasingly darker as he contemplated the defeat of glorious Germany. Then, on November 10th, a pastor tending to the sick and wounded broke the worst news of Hitler's life. Germany had surrendered to the Allies. Upon hearing Hearing the news, Hitler would later recount that he immediately suffered a second bout of blindness. Hitler's military career was an honorable and distinguished one, receiving the Iron Cross Second Class in 1914 and the Iron Cross First Class, a rare honor for such a low-ranking soldier in 1918. He showed bravery throughout the war, and while he was never quite the military man that he would claim in his own later fictionalized account of his service, he was a dutiful and obedient soldier. Sadly, the Great War would further taint the mind of the troubled young man, and in his own mind, blame for the defeat of Germany would not be due to superior allied economies and numbers, but because 
because of Jewish and communist enemy agents working to undo the great German people from within. Hitler would vow that he would be the one to make Germany great once more, and he'd have his revenge on those that tried to end its existence. Now go check out ways they tried to assassinate Hitler, or click this other video instead.